ETH merge, risk to reward. I was excited before. Now I'm gonna show you guys details behind the ETH merge, risk to reward. Can you make money? I'm gonna try to answer as many questions as possible. I'm also gonna ask you to leave some questions in the comment section below, and I'm gonna try to answer that too. But I wanna dive into pretty much everything I've researched up into this point about the ETH merge that I've been talking about. Can you double your money, blah, blah, blah. It's really not doubling your money. I've said this before, but it's doubling your coin. So that has risk to it. I don't wanna sell a dream that is not true. There's risk to every decision you make, risk versus reward. So we're gonna dive into that and I'm gonna try to explain to you as much as I possibly can about the ETH merge so I can get you caught up to speed on what's going on. I am very f excited for this event, but there's always risks. And I'm gonna give you four different scenarios and different skill levels, okay? So if you're a beginner all the way to advanced, I'm gonna show you, okay, exactly maybe some scenarios. I'm not, I'm not trading for you. So just to be clear, it might be different. It not might, but it's gonna change as I research more, okay? Up into the actual call itself, up into the actual trade that I make myself, it's most likely gonna be completely different. So please, and I'm not saying this for the sake of covering my butt legally, I'm saying this for the sake of please, do your own research and make your own decisions. Look at my energy, I'm excited. But that doesn't mean to sell your house and sell everything to go into the ETH merge. That's not what it means. I'm just excited about cryptocurrency and my goal is to get to as, as many people as possible and making their own decisions, making their own decisions, okay? Not financial advice, please, again, make your own decisions. What is the ETH merge? So the ETH merge is actually very simple. Let's talk about the ETH merge in a form of like Apple software. So Apple has essentially an operating system so there's an operating system that's called Mac, right? Macintosh, it's a computer. Now, when you upgrade Macintosh, you have a choice to either keep the old version, okay, of iOS or the new version of iOS, right? And most people usually pick the new version. So my prediction is that most people will pick Ethereum proof of stake. Actually, there's a lot of big exchanges. Uh, I think USDC has uh, basically sided with the Ethereum proof of stake uh, you know, to, to support them. The point is most people will support the new thing, right? The, the, most people will support Ethereum proof of stake and the minority will still support Ethereum proof of work. So how forks work is essentially, it's like an upgrade, but in cryptocurrency it's different because in cryptocurrency, you could technically keep both upgrades at the same time. You get to keep proof of work and proof of stake at the same time. You literally get to keep both coins, right? So the beauty of this is if you don't make any crazy decisions, there's no way you could lose. There is a way, you, there's always a way you could lose. I don't wanna say it like that, but you'll understand what I'm saying as we move forward. So let's jump into proof of work versus proof of stake. What is the difference? So proof of work is essentially mining, right? So people use um, Ethereum mining rigs. I know you've seen it before, Bitcoin miners. This is proof of work, Bitcoin's proof of work. And then there's proof of stake, right? What is proof of stake? That's essentially where people put their balance at stake. Instead of actually using a miner, they risk their capital, right? They risk maybe, let's say hypothetically, I don't know, $7,000. Let's say you have $7,000, you can risk that capital to secure the blockchain instead of buying a $7,000 mining rig. It's as simple as that, right? So proof of work is different in a, in, a, in you know in a sense that proof of work is actual physical computational power, and proof of stake is basically putting your capital at stake. It's at stake, okay? So that's the differences there. ETH fees will not decrease. So there's a lot of misconception, even to a certain extent. I thought that it would decrease, but it's not going to decrease at all. So there is no technological advancement on the fee side, okay? Future updates will happen though for Ethereum proof of stake and not for proof of work. So again, there's two different coins, okay? Ethereum proof of work will stay the same the way it's currently you know, happening right now. The way it currently works, the consensus mechanism of proof of work, that's happening and it stays the same. But when we upgrade to Ethereum proof of stake, the fees will not decrease, but down the line in a roadmap, and we'll talk about that in the future, there's no need to talk about it now, down the line, we will get a decrease in fees, okay? But not right now, okay? So, and that's really important because if you're looking to make a decision in the near future, you know, a lot of people are uh, hedging 
I guess, their decision-making process on a decreased fees, but I don't think that's smart, at least for right now, when you're trying to make this one decision, right? Ethereum transaction speeds will increase, but very slightly. So it will get faster on Ethereum proof of stake, but very little. I, I wouldn't take that in consideration in your decision-making process for if you're going to buy into the, uh, the ETH merge or not, or whatever the case is, okay? Now, if you're staking ETH, right? If you have ETH staked anywhere or locked up, you will receive the one-to-one -one airdrop, but you will not be able to take the stake out, okay? And a lot of people have been asking me this question, when will the merge happen? It's gonna be September 14th or 15th. Um, you could actually, if, if look, the blockchain is, is very complex. To a certain extent, I don't even understand exactly how it's going to come out. I, I plan on doing more research in the future and letting you guys know specifically, maybe we'll do a whole tutorial on exactly when the merge will happen. But uh, it's roughly September 14th or 15th. You can follow Vitalik Buterin on Twitter. He will give you more updates as they happen. Or you can go to this website uh, that you see there, and they actually give you an, an actual breakdown on how the merge will take place. And I'll probably make a YouTube video or tutorial, maybe not, not 100% sure in the future, showing you guys you know, when exactly it will happen. But to be honest with you, I don't think it's that important considering the strategies that we're going to be talking about in this video. So when we go over those strategies, um, you know, it'll start to make more sense. I don't think selling or, or forcing yourself to sell um, is the, the best plan of action because of user error, because there's going to be a lot of issues that are going to arise. And I'll talk about that. Okay. So we talked about this. What about stake ETH? So stake ETH will stay locked up until stake is over. If you stake to a centralized exchange, then wait for that announcement. So this is not going to pertain to most people, but it's for people that stake their ETH. Now, a big question is, can the merge fail? Okay. Look, uh, it, it is possible. Anything is possible, right? Um, but it's highly unlikely, especially if you hold both coins. So if you're holding both of them and one fails, the other one will retain its value and vice versa. Or if they both work, then they'll even out. I think the point is, and I think the best plan of action is if you don't sell, you won't lose, do the math, right? So if you have $100, then one to 3% of that will be like one to $3, okay? So please don't over, don't risk too much capital and over trade, please. Again, I know my energy is high and I know I'm happy about this, but don't be, don't be a fool, okay? A fool and his money are soon parted. Also, if you're using Scenario 2, please make sure to have more money to buy the dip because again, like I just told you, we will get a drop. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm very confident that hawkish Fed policy and certain things, the market conditions are not good right now. So the price, in my personal opinion, will likely tank or go down after this, okay? So pay attention, all right? So this is an intermediate strategy. I'm, I'm debating on if I should do this or the next one, which is an advanced strategy, and that's for me. And again, I'm a highly experienced trader. Please do not follow me if you don't, do not understand. Also, if you're in Fundamental Secrets and you're watching this, again, like, please, this, this, this pertains to you too. I will be doing a live stream of me actually trading when it happens, but if you do not understand these things, don't even try to research it before the merge. Like, don't even go, because if you just never done it before, you, it experience is learning, right? Sometimes you got to actually do the action. Words on a page won't, won't get you there. So please be humble, be humble. Don't get burned. Don't be greedy. You, it, you will pay for it. Whether you make money now or in the future, your habits will eventually have to pay for your greediness. So do not be greedy. And I'm saying this because I really want people, I'm looking to have, help people with financial dependence, guys. And, and for me to not say this would be high risk for a lot of people. So please take this with a grain of salt. Intermediate, okay? You could short ETH after merge. So you don't even have to participate in the merge. You, you could literally just not buy ETH and then short it because there's a good chance it will come down, okay? Or you could buy ETH after the merge dump. So after the merge happens and then all of the, the big exchanges and all the whales start selling their ETH, there's gonna be a massive dip and you could buy uh, the proof of work and the proof of stake if you want, okay? And get that little bounce, okay? Um, you could also just uh, short it on KuCoin or Bybit. Any exchange works. If you don't know how to short, don't do it, okay? Let me say it again. If you don't know what a short is, don't do it. Let me say it one more time. If you don't know what a short is, don't do it. Ignore it, okay? So please pay attention to what's going on. Scenario number four, okay? Hodl both coins, and this, this is the one I'm doing. This one's a little bit advanced, and I might tailor it and change it. Please hear me out. This video is not definite. It's not perfect, Okay, understand that I will likely change. I always change. Everyone always changes. So please take this information with a grain of salt. This is more of an educational experience for you so that you can see how I think. 
and make your own decisions. Let me say it again. See how I think and make your own decisions. Okay. So this is scenario number four. Hodl both coins at the merge event. So let's say you buy in with a thousand bucks, you get both coins and you hodl it. But then with another amount, another dollar amount, you can short it on another exchange. So what that does, because what this is what's going to happen. When the merge happens, everybody's going to be trying to sell uh, their ETH. That's like the obvious play, everyone. And I thought that at first. So when everybody's trying to sell the, on a decentralized exchange, so on a decentralized exchange, the gas fees are going to go high. It's going to be very expensive. But on a centralized exchange, the exchanges actually might go down. So the exchanges might go offline because everybody's trying to sell at once. Okay. Um, so it's going to be hard to sell your coins when you get that airdrop. So when you get the free coins or whatever the case is, it's going to be hard to sell. So it's almost smarter if you put in a short on a different exchange. Okay. And then just hodl the two coins because you're not going to be able to sell it anyways. You might, I don't want to say that that's definite, but I think it's going to be very hard to sell because that's what everybody's doing basically. So just hodl, spot, hodl, right? And if you don't understand this verbiage, it probably doesn't even pertain to you. So spot, hodl, okay? Um, and then short ETH uh, with a stop loss, okay? And both of them can have stop losses too, okay? Um, and let me just go back up. Try and sell both coins. You could try and, okay, that's what I was putting as a second option. You could try and sell, but if you can't sell, just, just hodl, right? You can try and spot sell. So let me just explain this one more time because this is advanced, okay? So you can either hodl both coins and try to sell if you can, and short ETH, or you could just uh, spot hold and short ETH. Either of, either of them are gonna be good. Cause I just really think that Ethereum is gonna dump maybe short term. Again, I rather think long term. I want everybody to understand, like if you just long term bought this, it would be okay. Like if you bought, let's say a thousand dollars worth of ETH, got the airdrop and then just held, it's gonna be okay, I promise, okay? Um, so yeah, just think long term uh, cause the market will likely continue hawkish Fed policy. Uh, they're decreasing spending, guys, uh, so it's not good for any risk on asset. This is just a one-time event that you could take advantage of, but I think it's better to take advantage of it from an educational perspective. Um, and think of it, thinking of it from that perspective will help you a lot. The bear market will continue. Um, there's going to be other forks, um, and there has been other forks, so we're going to compare it in this video, the BSV, BSV fork. Uh, and, and just, I just want to show you kind of the value of Bitcoin when this happened on Bitcoin. And I don't think ETH has seen the bottom yet. I've also made future uh, predictions in the past that ETH, uh, like a fork, like a big fork, I said it was going to be with Bitcoin, but it could be with Ethereum, is going to end the market um, and bring us all the way down. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I do think that something negative is going to happen to the market after this Ethereum fork, okay? So just be very careful, okay? Now, best places to sell, either or, it doesn't really matter. I think it's best if you just Google search it. Google search the exchange that you're holding your ETH, okay, or hold or sell, right? Google, Google search it and then see if they'll support it. See if you're going to get your double, your duplicate. Um, and you can sell there if you want, but I, I can't answer this for every exchange because I just don't know. I can't literally answer for every exchange. It's almost impossible for me to do that. So I think it's better if you do your own research and figure it out for yourself, what's going to go down with your exchange. Again, it will be very hard to sell ETH. If you are a beginner, make sure to not fall under user error because there are going to be replay attacks. Man, there's going to be all types of uh, scam phishing. There's going to be scams all over the place. So if you just don't understand Web3, or you just don't understand this and you're new, just having a HODL strategy might be the answer for you. Also, um, before we jump into some actual price action, I do want to explain this from the chart perspective uh, while we're here. If you find any spam counts using my name, so, um, man, these guys follow me all over the internet. I just want to be clear with you guys. Um, there's so many different spam accounts using my name to scam people. And it actually makes me like really upset um, because there's so many people um, that could have benefited from, you know, just not losing that money. You know, remember we're at the bottom of the bear run. So the price increase will be a five to 10x in the future. Like, I really want you guys uh, to do me a favor, if you can. If there's any spam account that you ever see, like a fake Alex or a fake this or a fake that, please do me a favor. I have a form below. I'm taking this serious. I'm actually giving this to another company, and they're, they're going to help me solve it, okay? Please do me a favor. Take all of the links of all of the spam Alex's or the scam Alex's bots, all the bots, right, and put it in this Google form, and I'm going to send that over to an actual security company, and hopefully they can help me clear that up. 
It's super annoying. It's damaging my reputation. If you guys as a community can help me out with that, that would be amazing. All right. Um, I'm not, I'm going to leave it at that. Remember, there's going to be scam forks with selling. So just understand that there's all types of risk. And I think the best answer is for you guys to simply just have a hodl strategy. That's going to be the best answer, but I gave some scenarios for you. Leave questions in the comment section. Let's jump into the actual market. So if we look at BLX, look, we do have some time and what we're looking at is a Bitcoin, we're looking at a Bitcoin index. I've played this chart out multiple times, November, end of the year, end of the year, end of the year, end of the year. We'll definitely see the bottom. All time periods have been playing out. I've been talking about this for what? How long now? Two, three months saying the same thing. I've been very consistent. I don't want to talk short term anymore. I've been very consistent on the fact that we will see the bottom very soon. I don't know when, but we will see one more leg down. I'm very confident of that. If we look at Bitcoin, this is on a short term time horizon. It looks like we are coming down on a weekly. Okay. So we go to the daily. We have a big candlestick here. So we could make our way down to the bottom channel. Don't know for sure, but again, I'll start accumulating things when we get to this purple channel here. Now, if we look at ETH USD, I do want to talk about this briefly so you can understand the risks. Okay. So I said before that all coins in Bitcoin will likely drop 90 plus percent. So I really do think it's going to be a minimum of 90% drop. So if you look at Ethereum now to where it is currently, we only have a 64% drop. That means if I grab this and I bring it to where we are currently, we still have the risk is 55.59% down, and that's from here to here. That's an 85% drop. So a 90% drop will bring us down to here, about a $450 Ethereum. So understand what we're doing now is very risky. Everything's very risky, right? It's kind of how it usually plays out. So if we go down to like 450 or whatever, like right around here, we have a 71% downside. So understand that if you do this, put a small position in and then dollar cost average like we usually do. The beauty of this scenario is that when you dollar cost average now, you get a duplicate coin, which the value of the coin can be significantly less. It could be like 2%. The value of the proof of work Ethereum could be literally like 2% of the original value of, of the adopted coin. I don't know for sure, like no one knows for sure, but that could happen. Now, there is a, a little bit of positive news that I do wanna talk about. Because, look, there's people like, oh, Ethereum proof of work coin is going to be valueless. I don't think it's going to be valueless. I, I think it's not going to be as valuable as proof of stake, but I do think that there's some value there. And the reason I say that is because of things like this. A 51% attack on ETH 2.0 has already happened. So proof of stake doesn't necessarily mean in, in, increased security. I want to be clear with everybody. Proof of stake does not mean increased security. Let me say it again. Proof of stake does not mean increased security. Actually, proof of work likely has better security. So there's going to be people that are Ethereum maximalist that like proof of work better. So there is, in my personal opinion, a very high likelihood that proof of work coin will happen. The proof of work coin will happen. Okay. Um, and it will retain value. I don't know how much value, but if we compare it to Bitcoin SV um, at launch, let me click max. I, I did this math with my group. I, I, you guys are just going to have to trust me on this, but you can see here, right? It was about $130 to $150. So the same thing happened with Bitcoin. It was about, uh, uh, as you can see, here, 200 bucks at launch. Um, and it was about 2%. So I think like uh, Bitcoin at the time, the real Bitcoin was like $7,000, $6,000 or something like that. Here, I could just pull it up briefly. Let's just duplicate this. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So if we look at Bitcoin BTC USD, right, open this up. Click max if we go over here and I want to see the date. So if you look around the time of, of the actual fork event, which was November 2018, you could see November 2018 right around here it was about $6,500. So $6,500 and then the price of Bitcoin SV was like 130 to 150. So we did the percentage math and it, it's the Bitcoin SV was about 2%. So remember the downside, right? If we come over here, the downside of ETH is 70%. And the duplicate will likely be anywhere, I don't know the exact, but from history, it was 2% of the value. So there is some risk here. Now, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, right? Because if you hold long-term, we're gonna get the price increase. So at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. But I, look guys, I'm taking part in the experience. I think this is a good dollar cost average position. I think I have enough skill set to be able to maneuver through this the right way, making a profit short-term and long-term. But again, that's up to you and your, and your specific situation. 
I'm gonna pretty much leave it at that. I think I've answered a lot of questions. I'm sure you guys will have more questions in the comment section below and I'll try to make a video for that. But in general, I think it's a great opportunity for you to take advantage of. This is the history of Ethereum. This is a one in six, seven year uh, opportunity. Um, and I think it's a good learning experience for all to, to see what goes on in cryptocurrency. Because remember, this, is a, this doesn't happen in other financial markets. People don't get that. But this does not happen in other financial markets. So be a part of history and join in on the Ethereum merge. And don't go crazy and bet your house. Please do not bet your house on the Ethereum <laughs> merge. Okay, guys. And last but not least, please fill out this form for me. If you can find some accounts that are scamming people off of my name, let me say it again. If you can find accounts that are spamming people off my name, uh, I told you I'm, I'm coming for them. I will not let them take advantage of the person that doesn't under, understand cryptocurrency. And wanna, I want to stop them, okay? I want to stop them. Uh, please help me out. That's pretty much it for this video. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Thanks for watching this, guys. Catch you in the next one.